drank alcohol and drove all the time. In fact, it was kind of a miracle that my blood alcohol was only 0 0.02 because normally I drank from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. I was a bartender by trade, so I drank often. I drank, and I, toward the end, toward the last few years, um, the first thing I did when I got up was pour a drink. It was pretty clear on I drank a lot and I drove a lot while I was drinking. It's like how, it's like you can't imagine going your whole life without a drink, but you don't have to. You just got to go through this one 24-hour period without a drink. And if you break it up into 24-hour periods, even Christmas, New Year's, or the Super Bowl, that's just one 24-hour period, and you can do any 24-hour period with out a drink as long as you have the support of other people in Alcoholics Anonymous. Life's worth more than cigarettes and methamphetamine. Life's worth more than crack cocaine and dragon chasing dreams. Life's worth more than heroin that only ends in tears. Life's worth more than all these things, but it ain't worth more than beer. While the pain and suffering of the families affected by these accidents are hard to measure, what can be measured is the strength and courage of a government willing to reduce the grisly numbers. We know that drivers are significantly impaired at .05. There is no debate about that. We lose on average of 10,000 people to impaired driving crashes every year. If our government is really interested in saving lives, all they have to do is look to other countries. Australia, Austria, Denmark, France, Germany, Israel, South Africa, Spain, and many more have already adopted a .05 illegal BAC limit for driving at the urging of leading medical, highway safety, and public health organizations. Japan, Poland, Norway, Russia, and Sweden have an even lower illegal BAC limit of .02 to .03. As you have heard, it's been 30 years since states began adopting the .08 BAC limit. Since then, however, the percentage of fatal crashes involving impaired drivers has not improved. It's time for a new national campaign and a new consensus to lower the illegal drunk driving threshold to 0.05 BAC or lower. Numerous studies from around the world show that once every state has adopted the new standard, we will save from 800 to 1,800 lives, reduce thousands of injuries, and save billions in costs, all without any appreciable increase in enforcement. Yes, it's time for the U.S. to join the rest of the world in adopting a lower legal level of alcohol-impaired driving. As the NTSB has shown, we will be in good company when we do. I am a young person in long-term recovery, and for me this means that I have not put any drugs or alcohol in my body in the last three years. Recovery for me has opened up so many doors in my life. Um, it allowed me to rebuild relationships with my family, gave me the opportunity to go back to school again. Um, it gave me the opportunity to have human relationships in general. I had an alcoholic father and uh, a workaholic mother, and uh, I was primarily raised by my grandfather. And so I grew up around the culture of, of drinking and drug use. And so I had my first drink of alcohol when I was in eighth grade, and I smoked pot for the first time when I was also when I was in eighth grade. Oh! Whoa! Let's go, Club! Here we go! Chug, 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 chug,
When I was able to resolutely make a decision that I was no longer going to live with alcohol and drugs in my life, regardless of circumstance, my life started to change. And I was able to add value to other people's lives outside of my own. If you would have told me five or six years ago that my dad was gonna be the best man at my wedding and my family and friends were gonna to come together on one day to see me marry a woman that I could never have imagined to be with for the rest of my life, I, I just wouldn't have believed you. I would have never thought that my life today could be so extraordinary. Not only filled with faith and family, but a lot of fun. Kate could not have been happier. And she told me it was the best day of her life. Well, I placed her in a limousine for the ride home. There was a drunk driver. He drove straight into us. And I could hear my wife screaming. I was looking on the floor for Kate to make sure that she was OK. Her head had been torn from her body. Every time you get behind the wheel drunk, you put all of us at risk. Could you live with yourself if you murdered my daughter? I was pulled over four times for DUI, and I was convicted for two. I did not ever think I had a problem with alcohol. I thought I was just having a good time. I believe that everybody drank. I'd say a couple things. My advice to someone in a DUI class would be, one, the advice that that woman gave me, or what she said to me, if you drink, you are going to drink and drive. You're going to continue to drink and drive. And for me, that was scary, because if I continue to drink and drive, the percentage that I'm gonna drink, drive, and kill someone rises, and I could not live with that. It's something that I've learned being sober is that people who do not have a problem drinking do not think about not drinking. You know, if you have to plan your drinks, if you have to think about not drinking and not driving, there's a problem there. for DUI? I got a DUI because I was out the other night with my sister and X and X happened and it wasn't putting me in a good situation. But you were drunk? Yes, I was and drunk. You were driving? I was not driving. I was actually parked. Had you been driving? Um, I was parked for two minutes. Yeah. Had you been driving before that two minutes? Yeah, I drove around a corner and parked. And I was still in my car. And then two minutes later, a cop came over. So you were driving? Around a corner, yeah. Drunk? Yeah. Yeah. That would be a yes? I wasn't driving. <clears throat> so no, I was not driving drunk. Well, I thought you said you were driving. I drove around a corner and parked. When I was, that was that. So I guess maybe if I was driving, <coughs> and still driving, and still driving, and then the cop pulled me over, yeah, that's really driving drunk. So, you, you... So there, that's what it is. It's either you're still driving, or you're not driving. So when I was pulled over, or when I was approached by a police officer, I was not driving. The car was shut off, my hands were off the steering wheel, I had been parked, 
There was no driving. That's sad. You, you drove the car around a corner. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You were his best friend. Next time you're out drinking, think, are you prepared to take a life? <laughs>